so first of all, uh, tell us about what you do for a living and for recreation, including what types of artistic and cultural activities you partake in. Okay, um, I'm a certified utility arborist, uh, which means I cut trees, prune trees uh, around power lines. Um, I'm an arborist by trade, and most of my work on Bowen Island is um, as a certified arborist. Um, so I guess that led me to dealing with wood on a regular basis, and um, and doing so, I started doing some chainsaw carving and and. Uh, when I found work was always slow, I would always end up uh, playing around with big chunks of wood and, and my chainsaw and, and creating art. How often do you get to do that? Not so much anymore. Um, as business is thriving in the tree world, yeah. uh, um, there becomes a, uh, it's quite a balance with art because if you're doing art um, and if you're not represented or well known, rely that on that as your business you actually have to have a day job which takes away from uh, sometimes the uh, how much time you can devote towards art or the creative flow gets disturbed a little bit just because of the, the financial burden of, of working for a living so it's a good problem to have though because it is successful <laughs> yeah and you know I always found when I'd work I'd think about art and when I was doing art, I always think about work. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, what uh, cultural activities do you participate in here? And that's everything and anything, art and music. Um, activities? Uh, well, um, a, lot of, a lot of what I do, I guess, is um, based around work. Uh, I have th three, four different companies on Bowen, so um, a lot of spare time. I don't have spare time. I'm usually running around doing one or two estimates a weekend and uh, or an evening or um, my family takes up most of my time. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, a proud father and enjoy spending time with my twin girls and, and uh, that takes up most of my spare time, Fantastic. what I have left. Um, I think you kind of answered this, so it, the next one was, because uh, this is for professional artists, which you are, the, uh, so the greatest challenge for you as a professional artist, but is that not having the representation? It's the marketing. The marketing, okay. um, I find uh, Bowen has a, a plethora of great artists in many different mediums, yet we fail to uh, recognize the need to sell or promote or... Uh, make the artist money in order for them to continue doing the art. Um, it's great to showcase stuff in galleries and galas and whatever, but um, as the artist, um, we need to be able to, you know, s sell and market our art in a way that we're always moving forward. And and sometimes I think over the last couple of years we've we've stalled in that department or have kind of recycled the same old ideas, which has led us. To the same result of of reaching that pl plateau of comfortability and that's what we do and that's our standard and this is as far as we'll get and mm -hmm. there's never been um, a commercial goal to market Bowen Island as a haven for artists um, it is definitely on a on a artist scale but as a marketing and commercial scale not really there's not a lot of places in the cove when I had a, um, a gallery up at Artisan Square, mm -hmm. I had a lot of people who wouldn't come up there because it's at the top of a hill, there's no taxi service, there's a, a, a discord between what happens in the cove to Artisan Square. Whereas if it was one big central hub, mm -hmm. you could do an art walk, you could you know, incorporate the, the businesses for a nice dinner, glass of wine, art walk, and then hop on the ferry or vice versa. So... Um, yeah, it's tough. I think uh, marketing's the biggest thing, biggest challenge for artists over here. We had loads of people in the summer that would come in the gallery and I'd send them up the hill, and somehow they wouldn't find it, or they wouldn't yeah. find the trail, or that it's, it was yeah, just exactly. They didn't like it. Yeah. Um, It'd be neat if you could take all the businesses from in the in the cove and put them up in Artisan, and then take all the art galleries and move them down to the cove. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, we can. Because the business is, you don't need that walk through traffic. Yeah. Right? As far as, you know, being a stationary store or, you know, what have you, real estate places. People are always going to seek you out for real estate. But to have everything front and center in the cove when you walk off Mm. the ferry, that's that's the biggest crux for for the town to work as a as a whole unit i think and sure in summer it seems like there are the people there that are looking for that absolutely there. i mean they come in droves it's just yeah. for some reason once they hit the cross street they kind of just lose <laughs> interest in going any far further far up the hill <laughs> have a gondola or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you've already answered this one as well so it's what's um holding you back from participating in uh, more creative and artistic activities you don't have any time it's the time it's the time and again if there was more incentive if i could say well i make just as much money doing art than i do with my business then sure i would make time for art yeah. but in the the grand world of living and supporting your kids and your family art's kind of the one you put at the bottom right unfortunately um, when you think of arts and culture on Bone Island, what person or what place comes first to mind? And who or what do you think is the greatest cultural asset? Um, well, for me, I was lucky enough to uh, meet a First Nations fellow and apprentice under him. And, um, you know, under his tutelage, learned everything there was about First Nations from... Um, stories from his experiences through potlatches and it was uh he looked at me as you know an equal carving partner that we just shared the joy and love of carving wood there was no racial boundary there was anything so everything was shared and and that was the first time i felt somebody so giving uh to teach me all about and maybe he just saw the passion right and so he's willing to share um, that really changed my life, and uh, and still think about that a lot. You was, know. was that here? Yeah. How did you meet him? Um, I took a carving class uh, from a fellow named Robert Barrett, and he had he had apprenticed under Norman Tate, who's very well known in the Vancouver circuit, mm-hmm. uh, gallery circuit, and. Um, I had been carving for a couple of years and my friends were at the local pub and they said, there's a first nations fellow here. We're pretty sure it's, it's, uh, Norman Tate. And I said, Oh, well, clean up and come on down. So I went down there. It wasn't, it wasn't Norman Tate, but, uh, a friend of mine did know him and introduced me to him. And it was, um, Simon Dick. And he was very well known, uh, still sells his stuff in the gallery. Um, he took his traditional art and um, took non-traditional ways and incorporated that into them to make just beautiful art. And um, and yeah, he was he was my mentor for many years. Is he still here? No. 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 Okay. Um. That's such a nice story. I think it's all about passion, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what do you think, culturally, what do you think differentiates Bowen Island from Vancouver most? I think we have more of a connection to the earth, mm-hmm. our surroundings, or community, um, smaller town. Um, you know what people are doing before they've even told you. <laughs> uh, it's just the Bowen Island grapevine. Um, uh, I, I find uh, it's a very close-knit community and, uh, you know, has its bonuses and its pros and cons, so to speak. Oh, but for for, uh, for the most part, I think uh, people are very much more in tune with the earth or the spirituality surrounding our, our environment, right? We, we, we all come here and some people go, oh my God, it's so isolated, I'd never lived there. And the other half go, this is the most beautiful place. I can't believe it's 40 minutes away from downtown Vancouver. And those are the two types of people, right? And I think most people that hang their hats here for a while have that wow factor still of what an awesome place we live in. From the mountains to Mount Gardner to the shores of Tunstall. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just all around great place. How long have you been here? 15 years. 
So I'm still a newbie in some people's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost the next question. Uh, in terms of culture, what's changed since you've arrived? And what do you see changing most now? Um, I think, uh, well, what I've noticed is it's definitely um, more hustle and bustle. Um, it's not such a sleepy, quiet town anymore. Um, and I guess people, you know, one half wants it to stay the sleepy old town. It's always been the other half wants to see more of a development, more of a, you know, commercial aspect uh, to offer, you know, younger people more opportunity, I guess. And mm -hmm. as well as artists as well, right? I mean, if we could develop the other side of the cove, it'd be a totally different feel to Bowen as well. So, um Culturally, I think we've moved ahead as far as um, uh, opening the doors for conversation for more development in a tasteful way for Bowen Island. Um, but there's still a lot of people that just want to keep it preserved as that Bowen Island feels. So it's it's a, a constant struggle. It's uh, a tough balance. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there any type of artistic or cultural activity you'd like to learn more about if only you knew who to ask? Uh, for me, it's all timing. Um, I'd love to do some painting. And I know I have outlook. Um, you know, Bowen Island Arts Council does a great job of, of bringing in uh, people who want to participate and do mm -hmm. classes and workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I'd have a problem finding... A, where or a resource list or network to find mm -hmm. that opportunity uh, but it's the time for me so I think there's a lot of great gals and, and people here that um, really love to share their knowledge and mm -hmm. that's what it's all about is being artists is being able to open those floodgates and 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 not hold back that knowledge like you know um, you don't want to give it away because it's you know secret. it's secret right no this is this is a but you think there's lots of that happening here? Yeah. Through yeah. the council and through individuals? Yeah. So yeah. there's lots of opportunities. At Absolutely. Time. For no sure. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the one great thing about social media is that you can start up, uh, I think there's a website, uh, Bowen Island Groups Classes Workshops. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, having those kind of networks to resource through is, is huge. Right. That's that's changed in even just the last five years. We never had that. Mm -hmm. So, um, why did you come here in the first place? And if you had to go, why would you be sad? What would you be? What would you miss? I came here on a contract to trim trees around the power lines. Mm -hmm. um, I was finished my apprenticeship. My boss was a jerk, <laughs> and I loved Bowen. I went, the first time I pulled up on uh, on the ferry, and I was outside on the upper deck, and I was thinking, wow, I can't believe I've never been here, and I could. this is a place I could seriously hang my hat for a while. Love at first sight. Yeah, it was. It really was. Had you been living in Vancouver before? White Rock. White Rock, okay. Yeah, so same kind of beachy town yeah. feel, um, but uh, I... I had relatives in Alberta, right in the country. I was a country boy at heart, but living in White Rocks. So there was this country boy, city boy, and Bowen seemed to be the perfect fit. I could find that happy medium of a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And it just spoke to me. I just, uh, and then all the events that happened in my life kind of just uh, clarified my decision to, uh, to stay here. So the question of what you'd miss if you left. What I'd miss is... You're not leaving now, are you? No. <laughs> you'd have to drag me off this time. Um, I think uh, the biggest thing, and we've looked at we've looked at that case scenario only because we feel like we're getting priced out of the market. Um, but the thing I would miss in looking around at other communities yeah. is the sense of a community. Yeah. Knowing everybody. Um, and... I guess the, the the nature and the accessibility to everything here, really. I mean, you can get you can 
be in a kayak in the water in five minutes. You can be going on a nice hike in five minutes. There's mm -hmm. walking trails. There's, you know, uh, my parents come here and they hate it. They're like, well, what are you going to, what are we going to do? <laughs> well, shut the wheels off. Turn the brain off. Enjoy. Sit back. Relax. Do they manage to do that? Um... Do they try? They try. Okay. They try. I mean, there's other complications. My, my stepdad suffers from depression, so he only likes to be in one area, and he doesn't like to leave his comfort zone. Oh, and, okay. Uh, but I think it's important for people just to do that and shut off the white noise and not hear, you know, we hear sirens once in a while, but not like Vancouver or, you know, the city where they're going all the time. And it's just that white noise. And some people really have a hard time with no noise just silence and the birds chirping and I love that so I think I'd miss that just the the tranquility of of the area something it's good for the soul isn't yeah it? it really is is it a real possibility that you could get priced out of here um yeah yeah I think for when you look at people who pay a million dollars in Vancouver for an apartment and then look at real estate over here and go geez it's only 40 minutes I wouldn't be commuting uh, there's way more value. You get land, you get a house. Yeah. So I find once spring hits, all the prices go up and where we were, you know, looking at bank mortgages, oh. we get approved for one number. By the time we think, okay, well, this is what we're approved. All the prices are up significantly where now you're paying half a million dollars for a junker. And to spend another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars into renovating, I mean, I make my money in the trees. I, I'm an arborist. That's my trade. So for me to rip out walls and build to code, I look at that as money out of my pocket again, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, value is a big one, and um, I need a bit of land to park my vehicles because I'm in the business I'm in, right? So I have to find a place that's suitable for my work and my living arrangement and it's tough to find on bone right and then finding value on something on a cliff side like that and going you know there's an a two acres for you know you know half million dollars and you're going well i can't use that any of that two acres <laughs> it's a cliff right so for me i mean i'm i'm picky i want i want a bit of land and it's going to be hard to find and that's the challenge i have it's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. It, it absolutely should be a reality when you're working so hard and so embedded and so invested, it seems. Yeah, and, and you know, we've looked at the possibility of moving and starting over, but, you know, 15 years of starting something, it's mm -mm. finally at the point where uh, I don't have to live to paycheck to paycheck anymore. And it may not, it might be another five years before we're able to buy it, and I'm just hoping that the prices don't keep jumping up out of our reach by then. Right? We should give Bowen Island some bad publicity to keep. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> we'll add that to the list. That's a whole separate question, isn't it? Um, oh, this is the last one. You'll be glad to know. You'll be set free soon. <laughs> uh, do you have any other thoughts about Bowen's artistic or creative needs, strengths, opportunities, or ideas about uh, its culture and development? I'd love to see more public art. Just over, out everywhere? Over here, everywhere, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Like the, the crosswalks, great, beautiful idea. Something so simple, so yeah. cost effective. You know, there's a place in uh, Fernwood, I think it's called. And all the power poles up the street yeah. are painted. Something as simple as, you know, bees, flowers. Yeah. I think some were, the kids did handprints colorful handprints on the poles just seven feet up just add color something different um you know i'd love to see more public art for sure we have so many art, great artists over here we should be showcasing it out in the public eye and be proud and wear that on mm -hmm. our sleeve as mm -hmm. bowen island the first thing you walk off on the ferry is art mm -hmm. you don't want to see blackberry bushes and you know, the same drab concrete walls mm -hmm. as every other community. We have uh, so many artists over here, we should just be so proud of that. And Why do you think that's not happening? Um, I think there's a lot of people who 
um, put so much effort into saying, no, we can't, <laughs> that if they took that same amount of effort into finding creative ways of saying, yes, we can, uh, we would be that much farther ahead. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people who just, ah, no, that'll never work. That's a terrible idea. Ah, you know, and it's, <laughs> I saw that a lot in the art culture and when I was up at the gallery and, uh, you know, we could all work together, but there's just some people that, you know, don't want to make it happen, I guess. Why do they need to be listened to? Well, I mean, you take a Bowen Island Arts Council or you take any kind of group of people and there's politics involved and there's different ideals and, and people who have been uh, the founding fathers and don't want to let go of those reins to young people with new passion and new ideas, mm. right? Mm. Uh, classic classic one-liner I've heard, well, we've never done it that way before. <laughs> what? You guys, think outside the box. You haven't done it that way before, and you haven't changed. The, 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 the end result has never changed. It won't change unless you get rid of that mentality of never doing it before. Or, so this is quite exciting, so maybe this is the beginning of something. Oh, yeah. The beginning of oh, yeah. That's why, you know, when you asked, I thought, hey, for sure, I've got to... We got a few words of advice. <laughs> Excellent. Are there any other words of advice you'd like to add? Oh, I just yeah, I'd just love to see everybody work together. Yeah. yeah. We're a great community. We don't need to. Um, we don't need to uh, be worried that somebody else is going to steal the limelight. If you're a great artist, you're a great artist. Your work's going to show. You're going to shine. People will realize it. Right. And if you're not a great artist, there's so many great artists here that, you know, um, you need to get out there. You need to, you know, do what you love. I mean, if, if, if it's a passion, then don't ignore that, right? Use this resource of all these great people. Get hooked up with somebody that you have the same ideals and get along with. I mean, half the time when I went through my, my mentorship, all we did was share stories and jokes and the carving was secondary, right? It was our relationship and that passion was there and our end result became beautiful because we enjoyed what we were doing. We weren't doing it for the money. We weren't doing it for the marketing, you know? He maybe was more so than I was because he was a full-time you know, artist, and, and that's what he did. But for me, it was just, uh, yeah, it was the greatest experience of my life. Yeah, I would recommend that to anybody, for sure. Thank you, Shane. You're welcome. Well, that started doing something funny. <laughs>